Welcome to the Promihemo YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk you through the chords that are most commonly used on the Promihemo disc. Now, the Promihemo disc is my own invention, um, and I designed it to help the braider work through the steps of a traditional Japanese braid. And I've done that through the shape of the disc and through my own system of slots dots and numbers. And the advantage of this braid is that it creates straight lines, uh, so it makes it perfect for um, beading. So something like this. So instead of a spiral braid, you've got a nice straight braid and you can position the beads in different ways. But this video is actually about, uh, not really about the beads, it's going to be about the cord that you might use. So the starting point is to say uh, that with this patented disc, there are many ways that you can use it. But the most common way to use it is this setup where you've got, you use a combination of thick and thin cords. The thick cords provide the structure for the braid and the thin cords carry the beads. So I will start with the thin cords. The thin cords that you would most often use are beading cords um, and the, the brand names of the most popular ones are Eslon and Ceylon. So those are the ones that are most commonly used and that's because they're very strong, they're very reliable, they come in great colours and they come in three sizes. Now the one you're going to use most often for all types of Kumihimo, uh, including Prumihimo, is this one which is about 0.5 millimeters in diameter and its um, specific um, to its technical name is TEX210 um, which is a weight measurement and that means that if you were to take a thousand meters of this cord and weigh it it would weigh 210 grams. Uh, so that's the one you're going to use most often because that fits so many different beads um, and it's the one that's most easily available as well. You can also use the thicker one, which is TEX 400, or the thinner one, which is TEX 135. Or you can use something similar in those diameters. So again, if you can't get hold of this one, the TEX 210, the 0.5 millimeter diameter, try and find something similar to that. Um, something nylon is very good because it's going to be non-stretch. Um, and just play around with what you can find, really. So those are your thinner cords. Now, for the thicker cords, the starting point is rat, in, rat tail or satin cord. Um, I generally call it satin cord, which is, is its general name. And it is basically a cord with a nice satin finish and a sort of core inside that gives it extra structure. And what I'm holding in my hands here are the three uh, most common uh, thicknesses that you will use. So this is one millimeter, this is two millimeter, and this one is more, not used so much, but this is three millimeters. So that gives you the comparison. And the reason these are a good starting point is that the slippery surface makes it easy to get uh, good tension. They come in a wide range of colors. Um, they're easily to, easy to find. So a lot of my tutorials and workshops will use um, this sort of cord. Now, um, it is manufactured in many different places and this can cause difficulties really because it can vary so much. So what I'm holding in my hand here is cord made in the Far East and this is nylon. And the advantage of this particular cord is it's quite nice and firm. It has a firm core. And if you want to um, melt the ends for a neat finish after a knot or something like that, um, it's synthetic so it will melt. The other type of satin cord that you might find is this. Um, this is made in the United States and this is made of rayon so that actually doesn't melt. This has a beautiful silky texture to it. It's actually not in production anymore but there's a lot of it available uh, in shops so you will still find this. 
um, and this has a softer feel inside, a softer core inside as well. Um, so what you'll find is that um, you may buy something that says it's two millimetres in diameter and it could be quite different to the two millimetre cord that you've bought from other places. So that's just something you need to be aware of really. And what you will find is um, thicker, firmer cords will make a wider braid with the beads more widely spaced and you will therefore need fewer beads. Thinner cord will make a thinner braid, the beads will be closer together and you'll need more of them. And with all crafts, you know, sometimes you just have to do a little bit of trial and error. But um, satin cord or rat tail is not the only cord that you can use. So I'm now going to bring in some other options that I really like to use. And they are knotting cord and sutash. Two versions of sutash I've got there, so we can see lovely colours. There we go. So these are also going to be your thick cords. Now, knotting cord again is one of those cords that that will have other names. Um, it's generally made in the Far East, and if you look very closely, you can see a sort of texture to it, which is really pretty in braids. It's nylon, so it will melt, um, and it again comes in. Um, a different sort of um, stiffness. Uh, so some can be very, very flexible and some a little bit stiffer. And those again will impact your braid. The stiffer the braid, the further apart the beads, sorry, the stiffer the cord, the further apart the beads, uh, the more flexible braids will make a tighter braid and therefore the beads are closer together. So that is knotting cord, um, sometimes known as Chinese knotting cord, sometimes known as Shambhala cord and then soutache, which is actually a braid for embroidery. And if you haven't come across this, I really recommend having a go at this. This is a flat braid with a sort of um, groove in the middle. And um, it's a very traditional braid that's used um, in embroidery, particularly on military uniforms and things like that. And more recently is used in beautiful bead embroidery. Uh, but it makes a fantastic braid and particularly on the Primihimo disc and you can get it in these really nice stripy effects. So if you substitute one of these um, soutache cords or the or the, um, the knotting cord for satin cord and you're following a pattern, you know, just be aware that there might be differences. So do a little sample, a couple of centimetres, inch or so, see how it matches up uh, and take it from there. So those, um, those really are your starting points, I would say. But that's not the end of the matter. So I'm just going to bring in just very few braids here to show you just um, a bit of variety. Uh, so what have I got? Now this and this. This was a really nice sort of coloured string that I found in a, in a craft shop. And the advantage of this was it worked up into a really nice... Uh, sturdy braid, really soft though, really really pretty and soft because it's cotton and then the advantage was that at the end I could fray it and make a little tassel like that and like that. So every cord that you use will bring its own properties and the fun really is exploring and seeing what you can do with them. This is a t-shirt yarn and I think this gives um, a really pretty effect to the braid um, uh, sort of, um, oh it's hard to describe, but sometimes people when they see this from a distance they say it looks like beads rather than braid um, because of the sort of rounded effect on each stitch and that has a little bit of a stretch to it so again when you play with other um, uh, cords for your work um, do a little sample, see what the effect is and see if you like that. You don't really want too much stretch on a bracelet because bracelet sizing is so difficult to get right. But on a necklace, a bit of stretch can be really comfortable. So that is t-shirt yarn. And then this is made with, um, I was in the haberdashery department and I found this really pretty um, a sort of binding really. It's just, it's not um, bias binding, it's not cut on the cross so it doesn't actually have stretch to it. Um, or it, well, it does have a bit of stretch but we, because it's been stitched that stretch is sort of minimised 
um, and I worked that together with satin cord uh, to make this um, really pretty effect. And the great thing about this was I could get a matching button, they all came together. So again, looking uh, beyond bead shops means that you can find some really pretty things. So I've only talked about um, the, the, um, the wider cords for this last part of the video. So finally, I'm just going to give you another option for the narrow cord. If you're not planning to use beads, you can um, use all sorts of things um, just for decorative effect as your, as your thinner cord. And in this case, I have used a, um, a metallic cord. Now, you do have to be a tiny bit careful with metallic cords. They can be a little bit scratchy. I find when you mix them with a satin cord, generally they're okay. But again, do a sample, feel it, see if the particular metallic cord that you're using feels soft or too scratchy and make a decision then. So I don't want this to be uh, the final word on what you can do for Prumihimo braids. I want it to be a starting point. So once you've um, tried all different cords, then raid your yarn stash because there are so many lovely effects you can get. Trial and error will tell you what you particularly like. This is a chenille yarn. This yarn is so pretty. It's a cotton yarn with um, a little sort of sheen to it. And this is a much narrower type of chenille yarn. But um, really, you know, if you look through your yarn supplies or go to a yarn shop, you will find so much choice. Uh, try to get the ones that are not too stretchy. Um, bamboo yarns are quite nice as well. You do, you want them that are quite smooth or extremely fluffy. <laughs> so if you're using something that's extremely fluffy, that's going to be the feature. Um, otherwise, uh, you want them fairly smooth or they can have a bit of a fuzzy effect when you've made your braid. But that's what you'll find out when you've had a little play with what you've got. So I hope that's given you some ideas of how you can use cords to get different effects with a Prumihimo braid. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, do consider visiting my website, prumihimo.com. You'll find lots more information there. Um, you'll also find the Prumihimo disc, which is available for sale there, and my two books, one on the Prumihimo disc and one on Kumihimo endings. So there's lots there. And if you haven't done so already, please do consider subscribing to my channel and maybe making a comment below if you like what you've seen. So thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye.